let me share with you my preferred ways. Huh? Since I say, oh, I prefer a more strategic way, what do I mean by that? So I'm going to share with you uh, uh, three strategies that I, uh, that I do. All right, then you get a sense of why do I say that it's better to look more, uh, to be more consistent in the way that you approach the market, to have a real plan uh, rather than a very reactive way of doing things. So I'm going through three strategies. One is a growth strategy, one is a value strategy, and one is a, a trading strategy. All right. Let's start with the trading strategy first. Okay. Let's be warm now. Okay. I just found out that 40,000 stocks in the world. That's a lot. <laughs> and if you ask me, right, majority, uh, uh, a lot of people say buy long term, hold long term, right? But the fact is, uh, very few stocks are worth holding long term. Right? Okay, out of these 43,000 stocks, right? Some stocks you can trade on, okay? Or you can buy and sell like a value stock, okay? But you must sell one. At one point, you must sell one. You cannot hold long term. And most stocks should be ignored. And that is how, you know, if you want to call it the 80-20 principle, 20% of the stocks are worth your time. 80% of stocks are not worth your time. Okay, and that means that you have to ignore a lot of stocks out there. Right? I don't think you will look at the whole stock market in the world. Lah. Mainly, maybe US, China, Hong Kong, Singapore, depending on where you base in, uh, maybe some of you are UK, right, or Europe, possible. Right, US has about four thousand five hundred or five thousand, uh, sorry, five thousand. China is about four thousand five hundred. Asia, Hong Kong is about two thousand five hundred. Singapore about seven hundred. UK, I don't know. Okay, so you see that there are quite a number of them, right? Uh, uh, most of them should be ignored. Right? Okay. Oh, Alan has a question on Japanese net net. Oh, currency upside defensive, but possible value trap. It depends on, okay, you want to do this kind of net net, right? It really depends on the stock you buy. It's, um, the general market doesn't matter. One. Okay, general market doesn't matter. One. All right, so it's too broad brush to tell you what to do because net net can happen anywhere. It's very individual counter dependent, less dependent on sector, less dependent on the macro outlook. Okay, so it depends on how you do it. Uh, everything got opportunity one. Whether you can spot it or whether you have time to spot it, that's another question. All right. So let's go to the first strategy, which is a short-term strategy. Okay. So those who are interested in short-term strategy, short-term means uh, my short-term is not very short. Uh, not intraday, few day, uh, weeks to months. Uh. Okay, actually, I'll count as months. Uh. All right. Short-term is months. Okay. So um, not very short in a lot of people's view. All right. So um, currently, uh, how I approach the short term is that it's more momentum driven. That means a uh, stock market must have strength. Then I will buy, right? If the stock market have no strength, okay, then I will buy, right? So there was an opportunity. Commodity had strength a few months ago. Um, we were long with momentum on these commodity stocks. And the reason why we want to do commodity, we want to do momentum on commodities, right? Okay, is because we know that commodity is very cyclical. Right? Okay, there's boom and bust, boom and bust, boom and bust. It doesn't last forever. So commodity stocks, right, to me, uh, they are not for buy and hold one. Because you hold 10 years, uh, it can still be where it is one. Agree or not? <laughs> right? Because it's a cycle. Uh, maybe you happen to buy low, uh, but when it go up, you didn't sell. Uh. Then 10 years later, you are back to square one. <laughs> okay. So that's why I say, I make this comment. Huh? This is very important. Huh? Few stocks are meant to be held for long term. Some stocks are meant to be bought. So most stocks are not. Okay. So one example, commodity stocks to me are not meant to be buy and hold one. Right? Because they are very cyclical in nature. They have a lot of boom and bust. Okay? They may not have exhibit their long-term growth. Some may have, right? Some may have. Huh? I'm not saying that absolutely no. But generally, uh, not so good for buy and hold. Okay. It is good for value, buy and sell. Because you buy at the bottom of the cycle, then you sell near the top. You don't know where the top are, but good enough profit, you can run really. Okay, so buy and sell can. But to me, the best is that if you didn't get in at the bottom, in the middle, you still can do a momentum trade. So that's what we did in the last few months. right? But the commodity run got gone already. I'll explain to you why I say that. 
And for now, US and China stock market, as we saw at the beginning of this webinar, uh, they are still below the moon average. So the answer is not to even trade them short term, especially as I said, these two weeks, right? is a critical juncture. Okay, it can turn bullish, right? And it can also go back down like what majority of you think it is. So these two weeks, very, very critical. How they perform. Yeah, yes, I'm going to go through the commodity examples. Okay, yeah, don't worry, right? So for example, these are some of the trades that we did in the last few months. So the Chevron is one of the oil majors. Uh, we took a 34% gain on this. So we went in December 2021. Okay, as you can see, yeah. so this was the entry point. All right, so we rally because of the inflation, right? For a good part, right? Uh, November was the, the month where the stock market started to crash. But commodity stocks were the one that's running up because of inflation, right? Runaway inflation. So you went up, oil prices keep going up over 100. Then by middle of June, okay, you can see, right? June 2022, which is two months ago, they start to come down. And then we sold here, okay, in June. Mid June. How does the momentum strategy uh uh sell? Right, is that just want to give you a clue? Huh? so this is the hundred day moving average. Okay, this is used as a sell point. If the price goes below the moving average, sell. That means the trend is over. So the purpose of momentum is to catch them when they run, and then sell them when the trend goes away. Okay, reverses. All right. So that's what we. We did in the first half of this year. Of course, we have hope. We would have hoped that the momentum for commodities continue to run. Uh. Okay, but it didn't. It went down. And that's why um, we also get a sense that maybe inflation is not a big risk anymore. Okay, so that's where that's why sometimes doing momentum trade, right, will give you a very good pulse of the market. Okay, because you 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 actually know where or which part of the market is running. And when did the run ends? Right? So it actually ended in June. And we only see the CPI start to drop in July. And we only get the message, the memo in August. But the market has already told us. That's why I always tell you that look at the market first. Then you will know likely what's going to happen to the economy later. Okay. The bottom indicator is the momentum, is the exponential regression. Right. Um, I think I have some explanation later. Huh? So just understand. I, I just want to give you a picture of what happened. Okay. Uh, we also long Conoco Phillips, another oil major. Right. Same thing. It's the same period. June out. Okay. December in. June out. About six months. Right. That was a thirty percent trade. Okay. Uh, EOG resources and other oil and gas also around that thirty plus percent. So they move largely together, lah. If you even if you do a index ETF uh, on oil, oil and gas, right? XLE, I think you'll be similar, All right? But we went in individual stocks, lah. So this is slightly different. This is a uh, chemicals, okay? Um, uh, fertilizers, right? So they also did well because fertilizer prices also shot up after uh, Russia fought Ukraine, right? Invaded Ukraine, okay? So this was uh, about thirty nine percent. It also came down. So that's why we start to realize that it's not just the oil, oil and gas companies, but uh, other types of commodities have also uh, came down. The trend is reverses. We also went through a corn ETF. Uh, went in, this was Jan this year, out June. So the out was very consistent. All the commodity stocks were out in June, by the middle of the June. Right? So that's why uh, if you want to do this kind of commodity investment, right, uh, don't anyhow do it. <laughs> Again, these are technical positioning, right? If you don't have a proper strategy, right? You don't know where to get out, right? You get trapped one. Okay, so what if you bought here, you didn't you didn't sell, it might be back to square one, right? So you have to have proper strategies, right? Entry and exit plans. Okay. So that's why I say I, I discourage those kind of uh, very um uh, ad hoc tactical positioning. Okay, so this is uh uh what we posted June 20, 24th June, right? We sold the last commodity stock, Suncor. I think this is also an oil and gas company, right? So the short-term strategy, all 100% cash ready. Okay. So that is what happened, right? Uh, what is the buy signal for commodities? Um, it's essentially a measurement of the strength of the market. Okay? Later, I'll explain to you, right? Don't worry. 
uh, what is the typical period for a commodity run? The run seems too short. We, we don't know. It can be a few months. It can be a few years. Right? It can also go back up. If we go back up, we got the momentum signal. We'll go along the uh, commodities again. Okay? Understand this. Uh, we don't predict the market. Or personally, I don't believe prediction is accurate enough to warrant an investment strategy. Okay? The next best way is to react fast enough. All right? So you don't need to react fast enough is to use momentum. Yeah. I, if you know a better way, let me know. I also want to know. Right? Otherwise, I would think that that's the next best alternative. All right? Anna? So um, just give you an idea. This is a momentum list that we generated. So some of you are asking like, um, uh, how do you know, right? What stocks to buy? What is the buy entry? Since I explained the exit entry, right? So we rank them based on this thing called exponential regression, right? It's, it's a percentage, huh? like here. So the higher means the more momentum the stock has. Okay, it's just a metric that we measure. So the latest list gives us some of these company. Quite a number of them are actually the China ADRs okay? because got two months they actually rallied, right? Especially the education one, which was heavily regulated, right? But they quietly, quietly start to move already. So you wouldn't know all this unless you you rank them, then they surface up. Uh, and you can see many of these are small ones, small caps, are, right? Because small caps, they, they rally harder. It is why I told you that in the last two months, the rally predominantly are the riskier ones, right? So some, I just pick out a few uh, interesting ones. Okay, so this is Siga technology. They actually uh, do a peel from monkeypox. It's not monkeypox, uh, it's actually smallpox, but can be, it was approved by FDA to be used for monkeypox. Um, uh, uh, treatment, all right, and then uh, rally, okay, you rally. So, uh, if you learn from this, uh, if you learn from this, uh, what is the market telling you about this monkeypox issue? Because we, we, we say that market is predictive, right? What does it tell you about the monkeypox situation likely to unfold? See whether you understand what I'm trying to say. Because the market is forward-looking. Right? <clears throat> yeah, okay. So which means that it's likely to worsen uh, this monkeypox. More cases, unlikely to come down. Uh, whether it's going to be a pandemic again, epidemic level, may or may not. Uh, still early to tell. But definitely cases will still continue to rise. Okay, so that's why I say you watch the market. You actually don't need to read the news one. <laughs> The news is actually too slow. Already, right? It'll be faster than the news. Oh, yeah. So this is one of the momentum stock. Okay. Uh, Celsius. Uh, this is a energy drink, which Pepsi recently made a investment, right? In the company. I don't know how many percent they bought. Right? But that was even before the momentum already come out already. Okay? And I think this was the day that they announced. That's why there's a gap. Okay. So you can see that the market actually knows something, right? Right? Because some of the insider probably know something. Uh, they bought it up. Okay, so momentum can catch some of these things before it even happen. Uh, H&R Block, you may not know this company, but they do groceries. Right? If you look at the main pages like Walmart, all these, right, their share price don't do well. But you look at the small players like this, another one is Go Grocery. Uh, their momentum is actually quite high. Very, very nice momentum. Okay, So how we identify the buy points, we actually do a ranking, basically. Right, we rank them based on this regression number to figure out, oh, sorry, it's not go grocery, grocery outlet. Okay, so um, that's how we pick up the momentum stocks. And this, every week we'll do the ranking because it will change, right? The numbers will change, all right? So momentum strategy, remember, is short term. So the reg frequency of checking has to be higher. It cannot be too short, all right? And even with all this, right, we, we saw this, we saw this list, but we didn't buy anything. Okay, the reason is because the overall market is uh, bearish. Okay, the overall market is still bearish, right? As I said earlier, it's very critical juncture. Okay, is this a critical resistance? If yes, it will go down. Okay, you can even go down lower than what it was, right? Lower, lower, right? Lower, low, lower highs. Okay, this is like the Dow theory, yeah. Right? It can also be very bullish. It pierces through. After it pierces through, it will re recover a bit. Then it continues. Right? So these two weeks, 
how this pan out. Very important. Okay, very important. All right, maybe you don't need two weeks. Huh? Maybe one week, you know. Eh? <laughs> yeah. uh, if it go down like that, you drop like a stone, then it's very obvious. One week, I think enough. Uh, the bull part, maybe you need two weeks. Huh? Yeah, so it's not out of the woods yet. That's why we prefer not to put on the trades yet. Okay, and uh, uh, I think I will, let me see the time. Huh? I think I will skip this. Huh? Okay. Right, so basically, what momentum is about, right, is buying high to sell higher. Okay, I know most of us are trained in the idea of buy low, sell high. Okay, but if you want to do short term trades, right, I strongly believe that momentum is the way to go. And momentum means that you trade with the trend. That means if it's uptrend, you buy. If it's downtrend, you don't buy. It's not anything short, lah. Don't lah. Okay, short is very sophisticated. Okay, unless you really know what you're doing can go ahead and short. But if you don't know what you're doing, better do anyhow short. Because you can lose a lot more money than you put in. All right? So that is what in a nutshell momentum is. And we measure by the regression number. The higher, the better. All right? Why is it important? Let me share with you uh, how it is. Uh. Okay? Uh. So you look at Meta. Okay? So what happened was that Meta, remember, it has a 26% drop one day because the results then thorough, then bad. Uh. Then the price come down 26%. Right. So a lot of people think that what? Wow, low. Then what? Buy, right? Okay. If you buy for long term, it's fine. Long term means many, many years. Huh? You hold, intend to hold many, many years. Can. No problem. But what if you want to buy low and immediately you think that, oh, because suddenly it drops so much, huh, it will rebound. Huh? Do you think this will happen? Do you think this will happen? After you buy, after something big drop, right? You buy because you think that you bounce up. So you buy, you want to sell here. How? Do you think this is likely? Do you think a rebound is likely? Or do you think, okay, let me show you. Okay, so this is A. Then this is B. Which one is more likely? After a big drop like that. Should you buy? And now we're talking about short term. Huh? That means few months. Huh? I'm not talking about few years. Huh? Okay. Which one is more likely? Okay, most of you say B, some of you say A. Yeah? Some of you say A. Yeah? Oh, quite a number of you say A. Okay. Right? It's more likely it's B. Yeah? Okay. And yes, maybe it can rebound, but it will still be bearish generally. Right? Just rebound a bit and go down again. Right? That is another trajectory. Yeah? <laughs> so it's possible, but the rebound is not going to be very strong. Right? Okay. So what happened? This was a drop. You can see? It continue to go down. And the general trend is continue to go down. Not go up. Uh, next example. How about Netflix? Same issue. Also minus 26%. I don't know what's with this minus 26%. Maybe magic number. Right? So a lot of people think that oh, buy here, then you rebound, then sell. Quick, quick money, you know. Oh, very easy money. Right? But what happened? Okay. Drop. Yes, there's a bit of jump. Okay. So if you don't manage to find a sell by this point you start to go down again then drop go down again okay all right i'm talking about short-term trades ah. okay i'm talking about short-term trades ah. i'm not talking about long-term trades all right see same thing it's like wow this long time good company wow, can really make a lot of money i didn't get a chance to buy because it become more and more expensive wow now drop already 30 percent discount can buy uh, then maybe you can resume, resume, then I sell, correct? Then what happened? Wow, go down all the way. Still haven't recover. <laughs> Minus 70%. <laughs> all right. So that is what I mean. Huh? Short-term trading, you follow the trend. If the trend is down, you better don't buy. Okay, buy only when the trend is up. Okay, now flip side. Uh, if I tell you buy here, what, what will you be thinking? What will you be thinking? I say buy. What will you be thinking at this point? Uh, momentum trading is actually very um, counterintuitive. One. Okay, very counterintuitive. One. Yeah, Gil said, wow, so high. See how uh, buy at this point, you crazy. Uh. You'll come down. Uh. Right, right? 
Okay, go on some more. It's already top right hand corner of the chart already. You mean you can stretch the chart even further, man? Okay, so remember, uh, this is like 70. We are looking a bit a uh, few months before. Uh. Uh, actually, this was last year. Okay, $76. Okay, remember, uh, I'm going to go feed it. $76 was here. Okay, why not? It really stretched the chart. Okay, can see, right? So it's like, eh, suddenly it looks very different, right? Eh, at this point, it's like, oh, it looks so topish, right? Uh, it looks like, oh, it's decelerating, uh, or volume going down, uh, right? Correct or not? Agree? So it looks like it's going down. Okay, and up. It went up. Then suddenly the second chart looks very different. It really stretched the chart. Okay. So when you look at a chart, right, remember you're always confined by this box. Right? You always think that hit the box must come down, right? Yeah, uh, somewhere very far from MA, right? Wow, cannot. Okay. So, mo but momentum is like that. You got to buy into strength, not the weakness. Uh. Okay, this is Chevron, about 130. Again, wow, it looks very high. Then this is 160. 130 was here. It was here. Yeah, it came down a bit, uh, but then went out again. Corn, $23. Break high, right? Okay. $23 was here. Stretch to 30. Can you see? Right? So I know that is the usual uh, reservation people have. And we even have graduates coming and say that, ah, you sure not? All the stock near 52 week high. Are you sure you want to buy? See, now current price. Current price is this. It's 52 week high is this. They are so far away from the low. You sure you want to buy all these stocks? Okay. <laughs> Right. I know it's very counterintuitive. And then what happened is this, right? So just give you some indication. Huh? So let's look at the first one, CF industry, $73. Feel that it was high. It became 107. Konoko Philip was $93. It was high. It became $101. Right? Suncall was $29. Suncall then become $34. Okay, you can go on and on, but you get a point. Okay. So to flip it around is that in the short term, you want to trade with the trend. You want to find something that's strong, that's going up strongly. It's very counterintuitive because most people think that I want to buy cheap. But if you want to trade short term, there is no such concept of cheap and expensive because what is cheap can become cheaper. What is expensive can become more expensive. In the short term, valuation don't matter. One. Okay, the market doesn't care about valuation in the short term. Valuation is only important in the long term. Many years. Okay, so in a short term, don't need to do valuation one. <laughs> don't need, right? It's what momentum drives the market. So that's what you focus on. Okay, so when I say strategy is something like this, you're basing on certain principles to design uh, an approach to guide you how you buy and sell in the market. It's not haphazard one, right? Oh, I think this one good, this one buy, this one bad. Right? You must have a proper strategy that's derived from principles that work, then it will make sense. Okay? Then you become steadier. Right? So all these are documented. 30 years ago, people will find out already. Uh, in fact, the momentum traders 70 years ago already figured out already. Right? After World War II, they already done it. Okay? So it exists. Right? It's proven. So what they have found is that, just to, just to give you some um, evidence uh, of their research, okay? So they went to find a historical performance. Let's say past one year return. Uh, past one year return. So usually people, you hear people say, right? Historical returns are not predictive of future performance. Very common. Okay, very, very common uh, caveat. Uh, right? True for long term. Uh, okay, may not be true for short term. Historical price movement has predictive value in the near term. You might be very surprised to hear that. That means, okay, let me test you, uh, if you understand what I'm trying to say. Uh, stock A went up like that. Uh, stock B go up like that. Okay, If you want to trade this short term, should you buy A or should you buy stock B? Yes, you buy A. You buy the leader. You buy the one with the strength. The chances of it going up is higher than B. So this is the counterintuitive part. So your historical performance 
have a hand in the near-term future performance. That is something that I think uh, if you are a very strong fundamental person, right, you don't believe one. <laughs> okay, right? But that is what the research has found. Okay, so let me explain the research to you. Huh? So they took the historical past one year return of all the stocks in the universe and they ranked them from the lowest past one year return to the highest past one year return. All these are known data. It's not difficult to get this data. Right? And they split them into 10 equal groups. Each group had the same number of stocks. So 10 different portfolios. And they track how they perform in the next few months. The group with the lowest past return went up 0.79% per month on average. Okay? Then the highest past return, uh, when the group, right? The group 10 with the highest past return, the most expensive group, went up even more, 1.74%. That's more than two times our performance. Okay. And the better historical performance, the better the future performance. Weird, right? Okay. But this is what the data shows you. And that's what momentum is all about. You buy into strength. You buy into leaders, not laggards. Okay, huh? But when A goes down, will it be a big drop within a short period? Uh, possible, okay? Because when momentum runs out, it also can become ugly, right? right? So that's why you need to know when to sell. Because if you don't sell, it can go back to the price you buy or even lower and make a loss, right? Remember? That's why you pair it with a moving average, okay? You pair it with a moving average. Where was it? Here, right? So these are the ones that we talk about just now okay so you must know when to sell you see if we buy here and we didn't sell now we only make a small gain we write all the way up all the way down okay so you want to sell at a point in time and you need some indicator of course i wish to sell here la, at the top la, but nobody knows the top until it happens okay so you need to have a sell strategy sell approach you cannot just uh, buy and hold one remember i told you uh, back to that Few stocks are meant to be hold long term. Some stocks are meant to be bought and sold. So momentum stocks are meant to be bought and sold. They are not meant to be held for everyone. You must sell one because momentum will run out one day. One. Okay. So imagine, based on that rule, you're supposed to sell Meta here on September 2021 at a price of $340. That is if you trade the stock. Okay. That, that was exit point. If you didn't exit, you hold until today. 100 over dollars. Okay, Netflix, same thing here. All right, 600 exit. Otherwise, 100 plus. Okay, C, same thing. 310 exit. Otherwise, 70, 80, 90 maybe now. Okay, still a big drop. Okay, so that's the idea. Right, you want to buy into strength, but you must also know when to exit. Otherwise, um, it will be a disaster. Then I'd rather you don't do it. <laughs> What happens if you happen to buy at the top? Then you lose money. Yeah. Okay. It's not 100% one. Ma. Okay. But overall, as a group, you will, you will even out. Ma. Right. So you will, in the long run, uh, the results will have a positive expectancy. Okay. So it's possible. Right. And uh, so these are some common mistakes. Just understand that uh, stop thinking of valuation, if, especially if you are doing short term uh, months. If you just want to hold a trade for a few months, uh, Okay, valuation not important. Right? It's a red herring. Right? Don't think those are too expensive. And you're supposed to sell, means sell. Okay, don't be stubborn. Huh? So if you're someone who cannot sell when you're supposed to sell, uh, then this kind of strategy cannot do one. Uh. You'll be a back holder. Okay. So I realized that in the past two years, a lot of people chase a lot of those stocks, uh, right? Crypto as well. And actually, if you know that you want to sell, right, it's better that you exit. Uh, you have an exit strategy. Otherwise, you don't know how to sell. Right, you don't know, you buy here or you enjoy some of the up the bull run. Wow, very short, huh? very easy to make money. Maybe you add even some more capital, right? Wow, then after that, it turned. Huh? You don't know what to do huh? because you didn't have an exit plan. Then it's like, maybe you will go up, lah. maybe, uh, right? maybe go up a bit, then come down again. Wow, jalat. How, what should I do now? Below my buy price, cannot sell already. Loss aversion and price anchoring and downward effect all coming in, right? okay? Then become a bad holder. All right, so that's why you must have a proper strategy. That's what I mean. Okay, you cannot anyhow ad hoc go into the market. Right? Okay, because you go ad hoc in the market, 
you end up relying on your biases to make decision, which we know that is not right. Okay, the biases that I talked about just now, oh, too far. Yeah, here, here, here. Okay, all these biases, right? You make you feel you make suboptimal investment decision. Okay.